with slaves, and all the kingdoms of the world were subordinated. I came to the city that resembled a garden full of fruits and flowers within its ornamented walls, within its ground planted with trees, its fields resembling the pattern of precious brocade, its spring of water which is as sweet as honey resembling kalsar. of Ismaili theology from him and under his guidance he was now ready to embrace Ismaili Tariqa to spread the word of Ismailism and to give his baya to the Imam of the time Imam Mustan Sirbillah consistent with any true conversion of the heart and conforming to his personality Nasir Khusro looked for ways to make inner changes in his external life. What he would later preach to others, he first practiced himself. He knew that to walk in his, he knew that, he knew that to walk in his ways of his new faith, he would need to learn as much as possible and then match his actions to knowledge. Nasser learned the teachings of the Imam in Cairo and the intellectual that he was, he had to study and immerse himself in the fine points of Ismaili theology and philosophy. His actions combined the required Sharia, such as prayers and fasting, with the more personal expressions of the faith, such as travel, study, teaching and writing. Through living this interconnected cycle of knowledge and action, he would enact the underlying Zahir and Batan doctrine of the Ismaili Tariqa. A man who has given his word by me and has broken it. A man who has hired a workman, has exacted his due in full from him, and has not given him his way. Yes, 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 yes. You see, I see this. But when he says, given his word by me, what, what does he mean? I think he means a promise made by anybody. That nobody should break a promise. There is more to it. 
It also means loyalty and obedience to the Imam because we have given bayah to him. Yes, but how do you interpret this? You see, bayah is a two-way promise. Imam promises and we promise. So Imam fulfills his promise, but us, we go astray. And that's what this is about. What is a soul without knowledge but lead? Religion is the alchemy that will make it gold. I am talking today of gold, of rubies and of precious metals. What makes each of these valuable? It is not by comparing one to the other. For the color of gold and brass are the same. They are both yellow. What then makes gold more sought after than brass? I think it's to do with what is inside, not only its shine. Very good. You see, the quality of gold has a different latif, a different virtue to brass, and therefore more costly. Similarly, with precious metals, that which is manifest on the outside has a hidden quality, which is its essence. So in Ismaili TV, whatever there is in the world consists of two parts, inner and outer, Zahir and body. Whatever is in the Zahir is known with external senses of hearing, smell, sight, touch, and taste. Yes, yes, you are absolutely right. But, of course, that which is batil is hidden. But it must be understood through intellectual search. You see, let me give you an example. In Zahir, what are the Shia components of worship? Prayer, Salat, fasting or psalm, charity or zakat, jihad or struggle, and hajj or pilgrimage. Very good. Each of these has a deeper meaning. You see, if I were to tell you that Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar, no sooner do I say the word Ramadan, what will you think? Of fasting and of the purity of the month. Ah, so we are speaking here of significance. This can be explained by using both the intellect and our understanding. Can you give us another example? Yes. Let me give you an example through, through animals. Why do they differ from us? They do not possess the faculty of intellect. And it is only through the proper use of the intellect that we can reach the conclusion, which is bati, which animals cannot do. You see, a dog. A dog will know that it is night, and he must sleep. And as the sun rises the next morning, he will wake up. And he will do this every day and every night. He will not know that as the days pass, months and years are going by as well. Because the dog does not realize the significance of the rising and setting of the sun. You see, we humans, we understand that as the years go by, we are growing older. And as we grow older, we are also getting closer to our deaths. The significance of death, we also know, is having to go through a day of judgment. We also know that this world is only of the physical body. And that the body and that the world, the world of the soul has no time or space connection. The soul is eternal. It never dies. What you are saying is simple. But I can see through this example that there could be some whose understanding could be like that of an animal and there can also be those who will think of the inner meaning into the life hereafter. This is so fascinating. Ah, but there is more. You see, to have only the knowledge is like the life of a dog if you do not have the appropriate action that goes with it once you understand this knowledge. What kind of action? Religious ethics, personal ethics, moral responsibility. How would you make 
your face, an angel face. By making your deeds, the deeds of angels, look with the inner eye at earth's hiddenness. For the outer eye cannot see it. What is the hiddenness of the world? <coughs> the noble ones see the esoteric, but not the exoteric. It is the world chained in shackles of wisdom even in this globe, seems too wide, too loose, to be bound, two things will do. Knowledge and obedience. Your bodies are mine, your spirit the buried jewel. Of these two treasured qualities, so exert yourself, body and soul. <coughs> Nasser Husro was convinced of two things, and during his whole life followed these convictions. One of them was that we, as humans, have an intellect which made us lord over all beasts. And as he says, with the intellect we can seek out all the hows and the whys. And he uses strong words when he says, Why do you suppose God gave you a mind for eating and sleeping like donkeys? The second thing Nasser based his whole life on was that action needs to follow knowledge. That is Islamic ethics. Nasser remained in Cairo under the Fatimid Empire for three years. Here, he observed all the facets of the governing state as Nasser had been in the civil service in Khorasan, he was able to judge as an insider. And he sang praises of everything he experienced or observed within the state. Nasser's loyalty to Imam Mustan Sirbillah was unflinching. of wisdom was our prophet and from him each member of his family is with the same fruit today the worthy sons of Ali have sons just as the prophet's daughter had sons the sons of Ali are those who are the Imams of the truth famed as their father for their greatness. Their father spread justice throughout the land. Why then be surprised that his sons follow their father's wisdom? During his time in Cairo, Nasser made three pilgrimages to Mecca. He recounts the grave dangers and extreme difficulties of the Hajj and said, the Hajj is a journey to be made by Muslims if the circumstances of their lives permitted the possibility. He was very clear about the value that needed to be achieved during and after the Hajj. Oh, you who have washed your face and head in Zamzam water, Make the heart like men 
and come back without a care? For more than 40 years, you've struggled, given little, but didn't take less for yourself. You have used every kind of trick, sold cheap cloth for the price of silk. When, when will all your sins be washed clean now? Don't let this corrupt fancy for the world possess you. There is no doubt at all that the pans of the scales are never washed clean by Zamzam water. While you may hide what you do with them, even from yourself, there is no such ambiguity before the sight of God. Nasir is now ready to return to his home sound in Khurasan. His life's ambition to meet with the Imam of the age and time is fulfilled, and he now returns to his hometown in the far east of Persia in order to carry out the work entrusted to him for the Dawah, to spread the message of the Ismaili Tariqa. He was appointed Huja, a chief amongst Dais for the area of Khurasan and beyond. He traveled through Arabia and joined with caravans to make a fourth pilgrimage. We hear of the great difficulties and dangers he faced. One story recounts how he was unable to drink and eat the only nourishment available from the Arabs, camel's milk and lizards. For many days, he would be without food, as bushes in the desert were not common to find. The journey was so lengthy for Nasir and his brother, that it took them to absolute poverty and deprivation. All their money was used, and they were traveling on a camel they had not even paid for. They had promised the escort that they would pay 30 dinars to him in Basra. Abu, let us, let us enter to have a bath. We have not been able to disentangle our hair for more than three months. Yes, indeed. Let's. No, no. Go away. You are madmen. Mad? We are no madmen. We are aristocrats. Oh, be off with you. Go. Go away. I don't know who we are. He doesn't know who we are. Don't worry about him. I know. I know of a vizier, of the king of Awaz. He is a worthy man, learned in poetry, and very generous. I have sent him a message. And if he will, we shall go and meet him. Wait, but do you think he will? to buy new clothes and 30 we can use to pay off our debts. We must go and meet him. is truly God's grace. For within 20 days of being completely lost, we are once again in the court of kings. 
I have understood one thing that this has not just been about the physical journey but the spiritual journey as well the two go hand in hand only then are they of value after further perils along the way the two brothers arrive in bulk after seven years Nasir now embarks on the third part of his life that of a die he traveled and invited people to the Tariqa of the Ismailis he became head of the missionary Dawah throughout Iran Afghanistan Badakhshan and all of Central Asia as we know he always emphasized on the need to acquire knowledge and then not hold it within himself it made him feel personally responsible to preach and call others to the truth he has made me a shepherd over the flock which I shall not abandon for another if you are not too drunk my thirsty one I will guide you on a path to edge of a mighty sea and if you accept this advice I give you shall be lifted from the dark But Abu, do you not see the anger, the hostility and the rage with which these political authorities are behaving towards our faith? They have already killed so many missionaries. I am afraid for my life. And yours, Abu. And mine, Aga. <laughs> we have always been protected. He will look after us. See, our belief and conviction is in the presence of a living guide who will teach us the Quran according to the time. But there are people who are unwilling to accept this, you see. Although we've not abandoned the fundamental principles of Tawheed, unity of God, Allah's will that created us, all we have done is emphasize the importance of the relationship between the spiritual and material world. Yes, indeed. Our faith encourages the use of the intellect. It does not suggest the following of dogma without searching for the spiritual uplifting. Yes, you see, even in the Quran it says, to God belongs this unseen of the heavens and the earth. Which really means that he who has more hidden knowledge is closer to God. But this interpretation is putting us in danger, especially amongst the scholars. Anyone who is spiritually hungry is accepting the faith because it is appeasing that hunger. The hand of God of the world, the Imam of the time, has sown the seed of humanity in my speech. Come, under my tree if you desire that I place a branch of humanity like flowing water I am freshening with my speech the fields planted with wisdom in the garden of true religion Nasir Khusro was correct in his perception that his enemies would persecute him because of his teachings. He would refute some claims of the Zahiri interpretations of Quranic verses, and this earned him their anger. He was furious at the teachings of the clerics that gave an explanation of the Day of Judgment. 
of an angry God and bringing in fear of hellfire. He felt that God was loving and forgiving. Nasser is unable to comprehend why there was such intense opposition of his views as they were so clear to him and he struggled to make sense of it. of anybody I have not stolen even a crust of bread no youth have I beaten into senility why then do young and old turn on me in enmity Nasser we have had to leave your beloved Nishapur but only to be threatened yet again now we must rest right here, in bulk. No, no, we cannot. This morning some men came to me. They told me that even though I was such an accomplished man, my message has become too apparent, too forceful. They have sent some exoteric clerics from Khurasan to come after me. Well, then perhaps it is best that we leave this region too. They settled in bulk for a while and preached allegiance to Imam Fustan Sirbillah and while teaching philosophy a fanatical mob set out to kill him and beat him up very badly. Now a time was approaching when a great change was to occur. Nasser had to find refuge eastward in a place called Yumgan in the court of an Ismaili prince in the mountainous region of Badakhshan. Here, far from the intellectual centers of Cairo and his beloved Khurasan, Dai Nasir Husro turned his energies inward, producing the most wonderful written works on Ismaili thinking and devotional poems or kasidas. Once in exile, Nasser's poems move from the beauty and appreciation of the external world to despair and bitterness about his exile and his intellectual solitude. of house and home, those lowest of the low, 
those ignorant and careless with their prayers. Khurasan has become the haven of the law. Underlying all of this, his poems show his conviction of the rightness of his actions and the sureness of his ultimate salvation before God on the day of judgment. The world is like a two-doored house, one for the beginning and one the end. You were brought imperfect to this place so that one day you leave here perfected. Nasser formed the analogy of the soul being a jewel within a mine. He saw himself as the most precious thing to be found within the surroundings. He spent time experiencing his spirituality and all his years of intellectualization culminate into a peak of eloquence of the quality and value of the individual soul. The soul's only purpose is to move towards God. The very difficult task of purifying the soul of mining the ruby and polishing it to attain that beauty and shine which was always there within. The only method was by the intellect leading the way, the clearing of the mine of rubbish to reach the ruby within. The intellect, he said, is the tool used to attain fulfillment in this world and salvation in the next. <laughs> On the body of your blessing, devotion is the head. On the book of goodness, devotion is the seal but devotion without knowledge is not devotion only a wisp of wind in the morning since you are two things body and soul your devotion must therefore be twofold Exercise both knowledge and action, for it is only these that can save all humankind from eternal fire. Light your candle of wisdom within your heart and hurry, heart at low.
Ladies and gentlemen, Shazin Chatur, the assistant director, who has worked tirelessly on this project. Thank you, Shazin. There is also a favorite lady in the house today, and that is none other but Shamina Lalani. Could you kindly come on stage? gentlemen, I would like to take just a few moments of your time so that you can share with us in a tribute to our director. <laughs> Amina, through this production, you have opened our hearts and our minds to a language that many of us are unfamiliar with. That language is poetry. Today, we have tried to put a few words together to express our affection and appreciation for all the love you have, you have given to us. This poem is for you. First, there came light, light upon light. With a cast of more than a hundred, initially you gave us a fright. But unperturbed you worked with all, no matter how young, no matter how old. What was to unfold was our history, our legacy, so beautifully told. You then flocked us together as one herd to bring to us conference of the birds. United were all communities as we embarked on a spiritual journey. Still searching today within ourselves, transgressing between the seven valleys. Unimaginable were the heights you have achieved Unforgettable are the memories our hearts won't leave. And as if that wasn't enough, you continue to stun us by bringing along the ruby shines on. Nasir awoke from his dream. So brave and courageous was he, converting himself from rock to ruby. We are weak, help we seek, because of you we have come so far, because of you, speechless, we now are. What tomorrow will show, only Allah knows. What yesterday brought, only he could have thought. This treasure we have today, only he could bring our way. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. 
and gentlemen for being such a good audience. Um, that's the end of our show. I hope you all enjoyed it. Good night and thank you.